Mechan 2410, Engineering Materials. 2204, Mechanical Properties of Materials. There are a list of concepts which will be introduced in this tutorial. The first thing is the first the force types. There are two types of force, normal force and shear force. Stress and strain types, normal stress and strain, and shear stress and strain. True stress and true strain, stress and stress curve, and Hooke's law. Elastic properties, elastic deformation region, Poisson's ratio, elastic recovery, and plastic deformation region. U stress, the TLT, and toughness. Part 4, Part 1, Introduction to Stress and Strain. Based on the force direction to the plane, we can define it to be normal force or shear force. For normal force, the applied force is normal to the surface. It can be tension or compression. For example, when you try to hammer a nail, shear force. Shear force is the force parallel to the surface. For example, air drag force on the airplane. And all of the other force are basically a vector sum of a normal force and a shear force. Normal strain and stress. Engineering. In the engineering definition of the normal stress, it is defined as sigma. Sigma stands for the stress. P, P is the symbol for normal force. A is the cross-sectional area, which we assume that it doesn't change with reset to time. Sign convention. For tensile stress, it is positive. For convection stress, or for compressive stress, it is negative. And yes, this is our assumption, as I just mentioned. The cost area is constant when doing the loading. <coughs> Normal strength. Normal strength as loint is defined as delta over L. Delta is an elongation of material, which is new minus the original length, the new length minus the original length, and L is the original length. Shear strain and stress. Shear stress will have a very similar definition with the normal stress. Tau, tau stands for shear stress, is over is equal to V over A. V is the shear force and A is still the cross sectional area. Shear strain is defined as gamma is the shear strain, is equal to tangent theta. Theta is the angle. Which is shown here. Here is the angle, the deformed angle of the material under the shear force. And you may refer the definition of shear stress and shear strain, no stress and no low strain, to the definition for the mechanical tool for, for zero. And for the, in terms of the sign convention for shear strain and stress, it is quite complicated. But you need to first define a coordinate system, x. y is in the, into the paper, so in, out of paper it is negative y, and set. And at the positive force direction, and if the force is at the positive plane, the resultant shear stress will be a positive. How do we know it is on positive plane? For example, this red thing is a positive thing because the positive set axis pass through the positive thing, pass through the thing, therefore it is positive. And for a positive force direction, the force is in the same direction with the positive x, y, z axis, but the, this time the thing is negative, then the resultant stress will be negative. Negative force direction, negative thing, the resultant stress will be positive. Negative thing, uh, not negative force direction, positive thing, the resultant stress will be negative. 
engineering stress and strain assume the core system area remain unchanged during loading. But it can only be an approximation of the true stress and strain as the core section area must be changed during the loading. And we define true stress, which is sigma 2 is equal to f over a, and a is the instantaneous area during the loading. True strain as long 2 is defined as the integration from the instantaneous length to the original length dl over l, which is equal to ln li, li is the instantaneous length over the lo, lo is the original length. How can we convert the true stress and strain to the engineering stress of and strain? Or we convert the engineering stress and strain, convert it to the true stress and strain. So we, are, we need to first assume the volumes of the crystal or of the of the solid remain unchanged during the loading process. True stress is equal to the engineering stress times one plus the engineering strain. And the true strain is equal to len. 1 plus the engineering strain. So we can see, see the difference of the true stress and strain and the engineering stress and strain in this picture. The true stress and strain is the red curve and the engineering stress and strain is the blue curve. And this picture is actually from the UDSO tensor test, which I will discuss in the next slide. There is a string curve, which is normally determined for uh, in the SL tensor test. And we often use the engineering stress versus engineering string curve to plot the curve. And there is several useful information we can extract from such curve and such graph. The first region, the blue region, is the elastic region where you can see that the curve is basically a straight line, which is linear. And then afterwards, you first enter the proportional limit, which is the limit for, which is the limit of the linear region. And after the proportional limit, there will be the real stress. After the real stress, then, you will enter the plastic region where when the loading is released, the material can never be deformed into its can be never returned to its original shape without external force, which is the red region. And then it comes to the yielding, and then there is still a rise of stress value with regard to string value. And we call it string hardening region. And D is the ultimate stress value we can be applied before it finally fractured. For the for this line, for C E dot, which is for a uh, bit material. For however, for C E, it is a uh, bit material. And at the D E region. The material itself will start lacking, lacking, which is the reduction, a uh, significant reduction of the cross sectional area. And then, and finally, at E, it will fracture eventually.